Hey everyone, this is Brad from iBuyPower. Uh, today we'll be doing a quick troubleshooting guide for when your PC is not powering on at all. This is a beginner level guide, so it's designed to be accessible for most users. As with all guides, we recommend that you watch this video through in its entirety before starting. No matter how confident you are, please do not skip a single step unless the guide tells you to. All steps here are included deliberately, and the skipping steps can result in the guide being ineffective. Unless instructed otherwise, always make sure your PC is completely turned off and unplugged while working inside of it. If you get stuck or feel uncomfortable at any point, feel free to reach out directly to our technical support for assistance either via email, phone, or live chat. First, let's make sure you're in the right place. On every power on cycle, the PC will go through three important steps. Power. The PC is receiving power from the power supply. Usually some LEDs will light up and the fans will spin. Post, short for Power On Self Test. The PC's motherboard will initialize and check all attached hardware. Your display will activate, usually showing a company logo. Post is required to access the system's BIOS. Boot, if your PC has an operating system like Windows, it has successfully booted once you see your login screen or desktop. This guide only covers a no power scenario. So for no post or no boot, refer to their respective guides. For this guide, you should prepare the following tools. A few Phillips head screwdrivers, and optionally something to cut zip ties, and a paper clip. Make sure your hands are clean and dry before touching any components, and never touch any electrical contacts under any circumstance. First, we will check some of the easier parts before actually opening up the PC. Make sure your power cord is securely plugged into the PC, and your power supply switch is set to on, which is the side with the line. Make sure your power strip and outlets are working. Just plug another device into them and see if that one works. We will open up the PC and check some of the major cables that supply power. In most cases, you won't need to access the rear cable management for this step. There are three major power connectors in your system. We will be focused on the large 24-pin power cable, which is usually located on the upper right edge of the motherboard. Most power supply plugs have a clip that you will need to squeeze in order to pull them out. Make sure the 24-pin connector seems properly clipped to its port on the board. Then there is no gap between the plastic of the connector and the port. If you do need to replug this connector, just keep in mind that it is very rigid and requires more force than most normal PC connectors to plug in. You may encounter a lot of resistance both plugging in and removing it. If the 24-pin seems seated correctly, the next cable to check is the header for the case's power button. If this cable gets disconnected or broken, the computer will not respond. Different models of motherboard can vary, but for the most part, the power button cable is plugged into a set of pins located on the lower right corner of the motherboard. It's a small plastic connector that usually says something like Power SW on it, but is sometimes plugged in upside down, so you won't be able to read it. Once you locate those plugs, check if any of them are loose or dangling. The power cable connects to pins 3 and 4 along the top row. If you notice others of these cables, they are for hard drive and power indicator LEDs as well as the reset switch. Button cables can be plugged in either direction, but the LED ones have polarity, so you must plug them in with the plus facing left. The HDD LED plug may not have the polarity indicated, so look for an arrow molded into the plastic that indicates the plus side. If your PC is still not powering on, the last thing to try is to jump the power button header. You will need to locate the power button header pins from earlier. Remove the plug that is there to expose the pins. Now, while the PC is plugged in and power switch is on, use a metal object like the end of a screwdriver to bridge these two pins together. This performs the same action as pressing the power button in case the cable or the switch itself is broken. The last step in this guide is to jump the power supply. This may be an intimidating step for some folks, but it will let you know if your power supply is dead. Before attempting this procedure again, make sure your power supply is off and unplugged. Unplug as many of the PC's main power cables as you have easy access to. This includes the video card's power cables, the 8-pin CPU power cable, which may be difficult to reach, so if you can't access it, that's fine, but if you can, try to remove it, and any Molex or SATA power connected to drives and accessories. As a tip, take a photo of your cable management and each connector you unplug to remember where it goes. Once you have all your items unplugged, grab your 24-pin power cable and use a paper clip to bridge these two pins. If your PSU has colored wiring, it will be a green and a black wire. 
If not, refer to this diagram for the location of the pins. After connecting the paper clip, plug the machine in and turn it back on. You should be able to hear your power supply's fan turn on, and if you left some hardware plugged in, you may see some activity from the PC. This means your PSU is likely not the source of the problem. If you get no discernible activity, then a dead power supply is the likely culprit. If you got activity from jumping the power supply, turn the PC back off, then start plugging in cables one at a time and turning the PC back on, until either you have all of them plugged back in, or suddenly you notice it stops turning on after plugging in a specific component. Whatever that plug is may help in diagnosing the problem. If at this point you're still unable to power on your PC, then you likely have some manner of hardware issue. This would be the time to proceed to some advanced troubleshooting with our support staff. Well that concludes our guide. Hopefully your issue was resolved somewhere along the way. Uh, if you have comments or concerns, feel free to leave them as a comment on this video or hit us up on social media. Thank you.